So my name is Dan Dosen, I'm here with Jeremy Lysmith, Shas Pasolka, and Brian Gershon. And we're working together as a team to, to build an application called CrowdMap. And we really want to spend most of our time up here today giving you a demonstration of the application and actually you know, hopefully get some audience participation and hopefully you can learn something. So we'll, you know, we'll focus on that. We just have a couple of slides to go through to tell you about you know, how we got together as a team and what CrowdMap actually is. So for first off for the company, so a lot of us on the CrowdMap team, and actually some other people that are here today, we were worked together as a, a team for a startup weekend several months ago in Seattle. And in fact, we, we, won the, the, we won the competition for best overall application. So we were called Degree at that time, and we changed our name to CrowdHop, and it's a social networking application. But we, we kind of thought, boy, we worked together as a team because we had diverse backgrounds. There were developers, or designers, or marketers, or people with you know, different types of business background. We thought, boy, you know, we kind of gelled together as a team well with Startup Weekend. Why don't we try that in you know, a different type of platform? And at the same time, Apple was coming out with their iPad, and it's a very rich uh, a device to you know, easily, you know, richly display information. So we thought, if we can put all that together, if there's a good idea, let's go ahead and you know, try something like that. And we came up with this idea of, you know, uh, of CrowdMap. And when we put the company together, it was, it's basically a, you know, there's, there's a bunch of us working part-time in this effort, and some people have more time, some people have less time. But depending on how much effort people can, could put together or you know put into the project, that allows them to and, you know reap that much of the rewards from the actual resulting product that we created. We want to kind of repeat that process, but that's the that's the gist of how we started CrowdMap. So it's a, a very flat organization, and it's very it's very thin, and it allows you know for easy, easily sharing equity in the in the applications that we create. And I will tell you about CrowdMap. Cool. So what problem are we solving? So who here is familiar with mind maps? Some mind mapping tools. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a bunch of you guys. Mind mapping tools are getting are gaining a lot of popularity right now. Uh, the users that the people that use them all the time are super passionate about them. There's a growing body of evidence that says that they're very, very effective ways to store information, to um, to create information, to uh, to remember information that, that you stored. So, for note taking, for brainstorming, they're they're really, really good tools. Um, so here's another one, and they they look really pretty, um, but but it's not just that. They, they really work the way that we work, the way that our brains work. Um, and right now, honestly, there's not really any good software, any software tools that, I mean, there's hundreds of software tools that let you do mind mapping, but there's none that actually give you this level of, of conciseness and, and beauty that the hand-drawn tools give you. Um, and that's not actually the problem that we're solving. The problems that we're solving um, are that you can't change uh, hand-drawn tools, which a lot of other tools actually try to solve that tool, uh, try to solve that problem. but they focus on, on that problem and the beauty problem, and they, they miss on, on the beauty problem. What separates us is that we're focusing also on collaboration. So unless you actually have your collaborator in the same room, and in fact, at the same table as you, you can't really collaborate on, on this and actually most software tools either. And also availability. So most tools out there are web-based or they're just on the iPad or they're just on iPhone. So our solution, um, is actually on, on all of them. So that's that's really what we're trying to offer, uh, a decent mind mapping platform that gives you all the all the basic stuff and just enough of the beauty and enough of the uh, enough of all the other benefits of mind mapping and a really, really, really good collaboration platform for working with your team, for brainstorming, um, and then also the, the availability of, of today's devices. So this will work on your iPhone, on your iPad, uh, soon on, on web and you know from there we can go on to other things. So that's all I wanted to talk about here. So let's go ahead and move to our demo. Do we have Adam putting on the screen? Okay, so if you have CrowdMap installed on your iPhone or iPad, now would be the time to bring it up. But we're going to kind of show you um, how you can collaborate on one of these maps and kind of, you know, how cool it is. Um, we're going to have Dan working on the map, and we're going to have Brian working on the map. I was going to give mine out to participants. Maybe you want to... So our function is how to, you know, how to start a startup. Does anybody have want anything they want to contribute? <laughs> so we've kind of got like we've kind of got it set up for you guys a little bit. Like we came up with a few thoughts the other day of you know the issues that you that arise when you're starting a startup: design, networking, financial, technical, customer. Um, can you guys think of anything that you would add to this? Like what? Um, business development. Business development. Okay. Do you want to add business development? And then maybe um, what you know? What would you add? What are the technical challenges you face when you're starting a startup? Like what comes up there? User interface. User interface. Okay. So maybe um, 
What else, Jeremy? Maybe we can let someone on the iPad add some things so they can. Will they show yeah. up? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Software licenses. So we can maybe add. So I'll go ahead and just move to the iPad, and so I think you're you're starting to see some of the other things right there. So licensing model, I'll get that. And someone's adding stuff over on financial. If you want to scroll, Jeremy. Yeah. So Emily here is adding through some things under financial. So meanwhile, we're having this conversation about price and all of those things. Tech cafe. <laughs> Over there. And if you guys are on your iPhone, so you can be collaborating on this. If you, you can be collaborating on this on your iPhone right now. You can be collaborating on it on an iPad. Um, and currently, if you have a web interface, you can uh, you can check out the map on the web on the on a, a read-only version um, on the web interface. So if you're in a lecture or you're in a college classroom, if you're at a conference. Um, if you're um, a team of journalists, a team of project managers, anything like that, um, you can you can collaborate on this together, and you can check. What, I mean, what's really cool about it that Jeremy mentioned is it is so portable. So if you have your iPad, um, obviously that's a larger screen. It's an easier interface. You can be working on it on your iPad. But then um, if you if you're mobile, if you're going somewhere else and you didn't bring your iPad but you have your iPhone, you can get this exact same display, this exact same interface on your iPhone. Um, so it really opens up a lot of opportunities for collaboration and for working together within this mind map format, which, like Jeremy said, is, is really growing in popularity and is really a great visual way to document ideas. And, um, and as you can see, I mean, it's, not, it's, it's different from an outline where you know, it's not linear. You can take one glance at this and you know exactly what's going on. You have all this data. Um, so it's a really cool way to uh, represent data and it's a really uh, cool way to facilitate teamwork. We've, we've actually talked about that. Um, I, if there's any number of other things. So right now you can represent a couple types of information. So maybe you want to represent other types of information as well. Um, so far we've used color for that. So for example, one map that our customers actually created, which was an awesome map, is this uh, feature request map. Let's see if I can. So I don't know if you can quite read that, but this is basically a feature request that our customers gave us, and they actually started using color as a as the third dimension, right? So it's kind of a key for that. But it'd be really cool to do three dimension or you know have be able to kind of like pivot and show different types of information or different organizations uh, of that same information. And but one thing that's been like that. really cool about this whole process is that the users have, um, in a lot of ways, determined the use cases. I mean, thought of use cases, and like Jeremy said, you know, this concept of using colors to indicate priority um, has, has, you know, we've kind of watched the customers create the use cases. Jeremy, do you want to show them join and see all, so they can see all the maps? So you can share maps either with, you know, certain individuals that you select, or you can make a map public. So this is a list of the current um, public maps. So you can see, I was at PII yesterday, and I was um, crowd mapping the keynote. And uh, here, if you wait, scroll down, Jeremy. So this is a, a map of the Russian-Turkish war that an international <laughs> user created. So I mean, how cool is that, right? Um, and, it, and we know that because on Chrome, there's a little extension where you can uh, translate it. So we could see everything they were saying. Uh, so I mean, it's just. Yes. Uh, what about digging into any of these topics? Do you have any way of, of having actual documents or actual things behind any of these topics, or is it simply just for you know mind mapping? If you're running out. So links is one of the like the next feature requests that we're going to okay. put in the, in the app. So that'll you'll be able to put in a URL <coughs> and a link it to some external source, whether it's a document or a website or whatever. And this but can you, be exported too okay. in a lot of ways. Okay. So so it's not an easy like if you if you have a No, it's not. But that, again, that whole idea of richer content in each node, that's you know, one of the next okay. areas we're going to have to into. They don't offer the collaboration, the real-time collaboration. Mm -hmm. That's that's the huge differentiating factor here, and it's what a lot of our competitors don't have and aren't even thinking about is this, this really cool real-time collaboration aspect and the device portability. And, and the, there's a couple people that are. So my Meister is actually somebody that that has a, a mind, uh, sorry, an iPad version that's still kind of early, um, but they have a really, really mature web platform. So, so they're definitely exactly in our space, but most people are, are not. And I mean, they're, they're
there's like literally hundreds of, of tools out there that are just not even anywhere near this. So what else can you do with the collaboration?